Hey, this is Stacy, one of the subject matter experts here on the EGMAT team, and we are going to tackle this hard OG question on heavy commitment together. Before we get to work, just a reminder to remember to drop a like below so I know you were here with me and the powers that be know that you found the video helpful. That way my team and I can keep making videos to help you and other students with the GMAT prep journey. Now, let's get to work. If you have not already solved this question, go ahead and press that pause button. Give yourself about 90 seconds to two minutes to work your th way through this, and then unpause yourself and we will get started on that solution. So let's get to work utilizing this sentence structure to extract that meaning. As we begin reading, we see heavy commitment by an executive. So we know right away that we have this commitment and this commitment is made by an executive. So we keep reading and find out to a course of action. So this commitment is to a particular course of action, especially if it has worked well in the past. So this course of action, especially one that has worked well in the past, makes it likely to. So this heavy commitment makes it likely to miss signs of incipient trouble, or misinterpret them when they do appear. Okay, so a couple of leading questions to get us thinking about the content that's being presented here. I always like to ask these probing questions to really get us thinking about the meaning and what is logical. What has worked well in the past? And we can utilize this chunk of the sentence here especially if it has worked well in the past. What has worked well in the past? This course of action has worked well in the past. Makes logical sense. What is the executive heavily committed to? Heavy commitment by an executive to this course of action. So again, this course of action that has proven success, okay? Who will miss the stated signs of trouble? Now, does it make sense to say the commitment will make miss these stated signs of trouble or the executive? Because it says heavy commitment makes it likely. So is it the commitment that makes it likely or is it the executive? It's more logical here to be saying the executive. So I'm gonna put a big question mark here because heavy commitment makes, that's an illogical subject verb kind of, that doesn't really make sense what we have going on here because it's more logical to say the executive that makes this commitment makes it likely, that blind commitment that we can sometimes get ourselves into makes it likely to miss signs. What will make the missing of the signs likely? Is it the commitment, the executive, or the fact that the executive is committed to the course of action, that blind commitment? This is where we start piecing those parts of the sentence together and really bringing those different entities of the sentence together to really extract that meaning. And it, it makes logical sense for it to be number three, the fact that the executive is that blind commitment to this course of action that makes it likely that they will miss signs or misinterpret them if they do appear. So. Let's go ahead and think about this meaning that we just extracted from those leading questions. An executive heavily committed to a course of action that has worked well in the past. So it is the executive that is heavily committed that is likely to miss the signs of trouble. That makes logical sense. So are there any grammatical errors here? And that becomes pretty obvious now that we've extracted this meaning because heavy commitment cannot make anything likely. It's the executive being heavily committed that makes it likely. So therefore, we have a subject verb does not make sense error because heavy commitment does not make sense with the verb makes. And also, notice the use of it here. There's two usages, and the usage is ambiguous in both. The first leaves us wondering if it is the commitment or the course of action that has worked well. And the second leaves us wondering who or what is likely to miss signs. So both pronouns are ambiguous, and we have a subject verb must make sense error. So 
two errors that we need to rectify. So let's get moving through these answer choices and see if we can get the job done. So as we take a look at choice B, in this choice, we now see that we have an executive makes. And this meaning is illogical because it does not make sense to say an executive makes missing signs of trouble likely. The executive does not make anything independently. It is the executive being heavily committed that makes missing signs likely. This meaning is not communicated here. The executive makes missing signs likely for whom? Remember that blind commitment that we pulled in that meaning analysis. It's that being heavily committed that makes things likely or makes the executive likely to miss these signs. So we have that meaning distortion here. Also, additionally, if you take a close look at the sentence, per our meaning analysis, we inferred that because of the heavy commitment to a particular course of action, the executive misses the signs of the emerging trouble. However, this blind commitment of an executive has been mentioned as additional information here. I've got that highlighted for you in yellow in this choice, and it does not form the core meaning of the sentence, and hence this is leading us to a meaning error. Also, we have a verb tense error. Notice the use of worked here. The present perfect has been removed, and the use of the simple past tense has been used here, and that is going to create a verb tense error because this is an incorrect usage. The course of action and the success of a course of action is not a one-time thing. Therefore, the present perfect is preferred here. There was no verb tense error in that original sentence. We just had that subject verb does not make sense, so we have no reason to change has worked. So we have a verb error here. And another pronoun issue. The sentence refers to general signs of trouble, not specific signs. Thus, the use of them is preferred over the use of ones here. So that is a smaller, less deterministic error, but still an error nonetheless. All right, let's take a look at choice C here. Now, this option is the second most popular option. About 22% of students land here. So. I'm guessing probably because the subject verb makes sense error has been remedied, but we still have the meaning error we discussed in choice B with the blind commitment of an executive being mentioned as additional information again in this choice, so it does not form that core meaning of the sentence and hence leads to that meaning error that we discussed. But also look at the modifier error that we have going on here especially if it has worked in the past. That's highlighted for you. This is a noun modifier that is intended to modify a course of action. But look where it's placed here. The modifier needs to be placed closer to the entity it's modifying. And this would also help because the placement of it is now creating this pronoun issue because the pronoun it is logically supposed to refer to the course of action. But look where it's being placed with this modifier being placed at the end of the sentence. Now it's so far away that we have these other intervening nouns. And now we're not sure of the pronoun antecedent relationship. We're not sure that we still get the sense that a course of action is what is being referred to. We have signs and incipient trouble all intervening in between. So it's meaning error modifier error, pronoun issue, so we're going to clearly reject choice C. Now let's take a look at choice D because there's a few things going on here. The phrase executives being heavily committed, this is just really awkward, wordy, much more precise ways to phrase this. Um, we also have a parallelism error. So if you take a look, we have or, which is our parallelism marker. That's highlighted in purple for you. But if you take a look at the list, the first entity in the list, to miss, is not parallel to the second entity, misinterpreting. So we do indeed have that parallelism error. And also take a look at the pronoun reference. We have them referring to makes them referring to executives. So executives being heavily committed makes them, makes executives. But this is a possessive pr pronoun, or them is not a possessive pronoun, but it's referring to a possessive noun. And 
we can't have a non-possessive pronoun referring to a possessive noun. So we have a pronoun reference, subject verbs not making sense, executives being heavily committed, makes, again, not making logical sense there, and then the parallelism issue. So lots of reasons to reject choice D. And choice E is finally going to be the one to get the job done for us. We have being heavily committed. So we have being being used as a noun entity here. This is logically clear, grammatically correct. Being heavily committed is likely to make an executive miss signs. So again, everything's fitting together beautifully here, properly expressing that meaning. And the use of the one pronoun, them, is clearly referring to signs. So the pronoun is agreeing with its antecedent. Being is properly connected to is and being used correctly. Clear, logical meaning, grammatically correct sentence here. Now, lots of people don't pick choice E because of the usage of being. So if you are one of those students that landed with choice C because you were uncomfortable with choice E, make sure that you get comfortable with the use of being in this noun format. Here's a quick summary slide highlighting the errors as we discuss them. The question has about a 54% accuracy rate. So if you need to review these errors, there they are for you. If you are Still questioning the usage of being, it is not uncommon to see being used on GMAT. It is not an automatic reason to reject an answer choice. I do have an article here for you that was written by one of our Rockstar SC expert, Shraddha, and you can access it at this link. Make sure you remember to like, comment below, and subscribe so you are alerted when new videos are posted. Happy learning.